If you are someone who's incredibly well versed in IT and data storage, you are probably going to be mortified by this video. <laughs> And welcome back. A little while ago, I did a video called "NAS is not a backup," and as, much, as you know, as, as cathartic as it was for me to not have to answer that question for the fifth time that week, I thought when I was looking at it, one of the most common things that came across in the comments, and indeed in the queries that came directly to me from that video, is storage can be a kind of members club. There are so many terms that are thrown around by you know heavy hit IT enthusiasts, and generally storage technology in general that are incredibly intimidated, and particularly because a number of these terms date back as early as the 70s and the 80s. I'm all for legacy, but there's no denying that some terms are just difficult for people to wrap their heads around. So what I want to do is create a few videos here that just explain some of the most common terms in storage. My main thing I want to do with these videos is just to make it as chewable and easy as possible. I want to make this as user-friendly as possible. So if you are someone who's incredibly well versed in IT and data storage, you are probably going to be mortified by this video with some of the base comparisons I'm going to make. But once again, the mission statement is to keep them as easy and user-friendly as possible. Today's video is going to be about storage terms. These are terms that are thrown around by NASIs when you first set them up, DASIs and IT professionals that can bamboozle you. I'm going to read from my notes here, slightly off camera, so I apologise if my eyes dip down there. The first thing is storage pools. When you put drives inside a NAS and boot it up and you have to start preparing an area of storage, you're invited to create a storage pool. A storage pool is kind of what the RAID becomes. It's all the disks that are available and what they're pushed into after a RAID. And again, if you don't know what RAID is, check out my video on, on what RAID is. But a storage pool is the total available physical capacity open to you with those hard drives. And it's what you build your RAID from and in. Um, a RAID, again, I know I said I wouldn't say about a RAID, is a redundant array of inexpensive disks or redundant array of independent disks. I threw a bone out to both groups there. What it is, is the ability to have multiple drives all pushed together and that creates one big storage pool. Which RAID you go for will give you a certain amount of capacity and redundancy and speed, but we'll leave that for the next video. Next, we'll talk about volumes. Storage pools and volumes are two concepts that get thrown around and actually mean very different things. And if you do them in the wrong order or in the wrong way, it can be problematic. A volume is something that lives on the storage pool. So the storage pool that we talked about earlier is all the drives, all of these little hard drives pushed together in a big area of space. A volume is when you say, of this huge amount of space that's available, I'd like to create a storage area for all of my apps and files on it. Now, you can create as big or as small a volume as you want. If you've got 10 terabytes of storage in your storage pool, you can create three storage pools, if you so choose, of 3.33 infinity terabytes. Or you can create one giant one or two half size ones, whatever you like. That is what a volume is. It is the area of space that all your files and apps are going to come from that lives on that storage pool. So storage pool, volume. After that, we can talk about the two most common types of volume. A thin volume and a thick volume. A thin volume is when you create an area of storage, uh, a volume on that storage pool. And the maximum capacity is technically unlimited. So say you've got that 10 terabyte storage pool we just talked about. A thin volume means you can say, I'd like to create a volume on this of 100 terabytes. Now, of course, you've only got 10 terabytes available, but a thin volume grows with the data that is on it. And if you do reach that 10 terabytes there that are on that storage volume, you can add uh, on the storage pool, you can add expansions, add other NASs, virtual JBOTs and more, and effectively increase the available space, and then you can add more data to your volume to go with it. A thin volume is a dynamic growing area that you can work with. A thick volume is when you say, this volume is going to be this big. It basically fills the available space, and it says it's not going to grow gradually over time. I'm not going to add files, and it's going to you know, go along with it. A thick volume goes, bang, it's this big, and that's as big as it gets. Now, obviously, you can't convert one to the other. You can convert thin to thick, but you can't do vice versa. So do bear that in mind during your selection process. 
The last two terms I want to talk about are ones that really bamboozle people. They are iSCSI and LUN. Um, iSCSI is uh, Intelligent SCSI, and again, you'll have to forgive me, I can't remember what SCSI stands for, um, and LUN is Logical Unit Number. I always get that U wrong and I had to look. What these are, generally speaking, are just ways to make your NAS drive look local accessible. So when you have C drive and you have map network drives, what you can do is create that NAS area, that volume you've created, and make it accessible to your users, your business, your clients, and within your own network. Uh, an iSCSI um, LUN is when you have an address for that storage area that you can then use, carry it over here, enter that address, and then that PC or Mac or whatever or server will then see this storage as if it's local. It will be tricked into thinking it is local. And I say trick, it's not really the right term for it. Again, I can already hear the comments exploding. Um, but that has been some of the most common storage terms. In my next video, I'm going to talk about RAID terms, not just RAID, but a lot of more common ones. And finally, I'm going to talk about storage media terms. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you enjoyed this, and if you've got any questions about any of the storage terms that are out there, and again, I'm sorry I offended a lot of you IT guys out there, do let me know in the comments. Cheerio, see you later.